to come to what you're specifically asking me to speak to, Indrajit, I also want to place this in the context of how very intriguingly you have interpreted your mandate as an auction house. Uh, I notice, and I, we've talked about this before, you have, uh, you have looked at figures who tend to be peripheral or marginal or have been unjustly overlooked. Uh, Rothindranath Tagore in an earlier auction, Bhanu Rajapadhe uh, Athaya in a more recent auction. And as someone who's been in part of the art world here and elsewhere since the late 1980s as a writer, as a curator, as someone who has played various roles in cultural institutions. One of my key problems with the Indian art world is that we have too quickly committed ourselves to a rather limited and I would say shallow notion of a canon. Uh, which simply sustains itself by simple reiteration in financial fora that matter, which actually means that a whole range of practices and positions get left out. So uh, this is by way of, uh, uh, believe it or not, it's actually a compliment, Indrajit. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, um, I'm fascinated by the way in which you have, uh, you know, put your energies into, into restoring to view these positions. And Gobardhan Ash, in my view, is also one of those. I've uh, over the years, seen his work in episodic, fragmentary flashes, thought about him in some contexts, but it's really what you've done that in, you know, invites us to look carefully at why he was special and how one might contextualize him and yet recognize the distinctiveness. So briefly, what I want to do is to move our framework a little bit. I want to compare Gobardhan Ash to a literary figure who was almost his exact contemporary. Uh, Jibonan, Jibonanondo Dash, who was a poet and a writer of fiction. And both of these people, as I've been thinking about their lives, uh, you know, uh, Gobardhan Ash was born in 1907, Jibonanondo in 1899. They were not young men at partition and independence. They were already, uh, you know, in, in the middle of their lives. Uh, Jibonanundu Das had spent 42 years on this planet by the time Tagore died in 1941. Uh, Gobardhan Ash was 34 in 1941 when Tagore died. You know, they'd spent their formative years, their early youth, they were already well en route in their career in a position of having to articulate themselves against this incredibly salient and dominant figure and his contribution. And I think that's something I want to flag in this discussion how Tagore's presence, and please don't take this as a criticism of Tagore. He was an extraordinary visionary and contributor across fields. But in terms of what this meant for a new generation, be it of painters or of poets, I think there was a very, very strong sense that there was a dominant way of doing things that they had to struggle against. And uh, when I think about what was happening in Calcutta at that point, this is a kind of backstory to those crucial years, 1948 to 51. We have to see how people like Jibon Anondo in poetry and Gobardhan Ash in, in the visual arts were also denizens of a city that had lost ground. You know, from 1935 onwards, the, the New Delhi is the seat of government and of power. Calcutta is now the ex-capital. It begins to be marginalized in a certain way. And its citizens, its cultural actors are beginning to deal with this question. In the 1940s, it's, uh, the city is heavily mobilized as a kind of uh, base of operations for all the military activities on the Eastern Front of the Second World War, Assam, Burma, and there's a great deal of chaos already. Uh, then the famine as a result of this wartime operations, uh, the famine kicks in. And then in 1947, uh, there's the immense refugee crisis from East Bengal, which really shakes up the city's infrastructure and sets in motion social transformations that will continue for decades longer. So that's the general background of destabilization, crisis, and so on that I want to bring into this discussion because it informs the work of Gobardhan Ash, the decisions that he makes in those crucial years, 48 to 51. And um, because normally we tend to see this in the art world, we tend to see this, this history as a kind of play of interplay of styles. You know, there's, we see that there's still the Bengal school with its relative stability of style and imagery. 
Then we position the Shanti Niketan Manor over against it. Then there's then we put in the Calcutta School. Then there's the Calcutta Group, and then there's talk of how the progressives of Bombay had opened up a certain dialogue with artists in Calcutta. Now that's you know th these are these are these rep these would account for certain stylistic shifts. But I think the deeper psychic crises, the more the cultural questions that these artists are dealing with, that comes a little bit from this history that I've sketched out. So how does one situate Gobardhan Dash's work? I mean, remember that in those years, 1948 to 51, there are many options available to artists in Calcutta. On the one hand, through the famine and the war years, there's the very, very powerful graphic, politically oriented style of artists like Chitta Prashad, who were part of the left, formerly part of the left formation, and their work spoke for the anguish and suffering of the starving and the vulnerable. Uh, there was also, of course, uh, all of the experiments in an indigenously achieved modernism that were coming out of Shantiniketan. Ram Kinkal Berge would, when I look at the gouaches of Gobardhan Ash, for instance, I find myself thinking a little bit of what Ram Kinkal was doing here as a painter in those years. Uh, the Calcutta group had positioned itself as a set of artists who would deal with the contemporary and not deal with crises and questions that they felt already belonged to a previous generation. So rather than the civilizational questions that exercised somebody like Tagore, I think the Calcutta group was more concerned with articulating the, its own historical moment, which already was looking forward to a post-colonial time, the breakdown of empire, and how to really, what is the drama of the individual in these questions? What are the, what are the artistic choices to be made? And in those same years, young art students like Jogain Chaudhary and Sunil Das were drawing the refugees, the homeless at Shalda Station, for instance. So I'm saying all this because the tendency sometimes is to uh, pick an artist out of his or her context. And I would like to see Gobardhan Ash also in this, in this larger field of possibilities and practices. But when I look specifically at the work from 48 to 51, I'm very intrigued by the way in which he pulls back from all of this and focuses on creating a style that very definitely has a connection to, the, to, to various idioms within Pottachitra, not in a nostalgic or in a romantic way, but in a fairly robust way to try and bring this Pottachitra imagery, its figuration, into a consciousness that clearly is aware of cinema, that's clearly aware of animation. And I'm struck by this, uh, that you have, you have a, a form of figuration that really speak, looks back, speaks to the Pottra Chitra, but also looks forward to, looks into its own time, to cinema, to, uh, to animation, as I said. And it just makes it very fresh and contemporary, leaps out. Uh, it's also, an artistic sensibility that is fully engaged with political questions. So communist activists, there's images called Comrade, for instance, they play a role. The Santhal community is certainly very salient and present. The handling is different from the kind of idealization you might see in the Shantiniketan school. But he's also looking back into deep time. He's looking also back to Fahien, for instance, the Chinese pilgrim. There's an awareness of how Calcutta, no longer the capital, greatly beset by political crises, is yet part of an Eastern India that was part of a cosmopolitan, pan-Asian way of being in the world. So when I look at these images, it's amazing how so many of these different histories come in into this very, very tight period. And uh, this, is, this, is my, this is my takeaway. I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's been far too long that the, the contribution of of this painter has remained in abeyance. And it's really high time we, we bear witness to him as indeed you're doing. So these are the thoughts that I'm gonna share and I hope we can circle back to some of these things uh, later in this conversation. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, just to circle back a little